The VolQuest Two Minute Drill is brought to you by Craven Wings. One and zero, oh, Tennessee, fifty nine ten, victors tonight over Ball State and Brent. Tennessee jumped out early. They led thirty eight nothing at halftime. They took care of business against an inferior opponent the way you were supposed to take care of business. A year ago, 8,000 less people in the stands, kind of a uh, 38 to whatever win uh, over, over uh, you know, Bowling Green. This year, no. They, they come out and they dominated. Well, that, that's what you're supposed to do when you're a veteran team. When and I don't even think they played their best ball. No, when you bring your starting quarterback back, you're supposed to come out of the gates flying. Yeah. They got off to an unbelievable start. I mean, what a great start. Two guys who have earned their stripes. <laughs> two plays. <to> <laughs> two plays. You know, and, and you're up you know, with an interception and then you throw the touchdown. So, uh, you know, a great start. That's how you want to start a game. You're not going to start all of them like that. But this was a team ready to play. You expected them to be ready to play. They should have been ready to play. They played like they were ready to play. Were they great in spots? At times, they were really good. At other times, eh. I mean, the secondary, I, I think there's some things to tighten up there. I think they're still trying to figure out some of the puzzle pieces and all that. But but overall, you dominate an opponent the way you're supposed to dominate an opponent. Yeah, Jalen Wright got his first, you know, contact work since back in the spring. I mean, it looked decent. Jabari Small, solid performance. Dylan Sampson flashed. Um, Brew McCoy, you know, played physical. I, I thought, you know, as, as Heupel said, you know, for his first game of the offense, Looked really smooth. Yeah, he did. He, and I, I sent you a text during the game. I guess it's because it's 15. He, his body reminds me a little bit of Kelly Washington. I don't think he runs as fast, but there's a little bit of that physicality. Yeah. He kind of uses his body in different ways. Um, but but he looked comfortable. I think that was the other thing, too. He did, and that was the whole team. There wasn't guys running around like chicken, you know, chicken with their head cut off. I don't know where to line up. What are we doing bouncing around? I mean, they were fast, but they were efficient fast. And, and I think that's a good sign for them to start. Again, Game one, you're a 35-point favorite. You dominated the team the way you're supposed to dominate. Plenty of things to work on moving forward, but a good way to start this thing. So basically, Brent Hubbs is saying Brew McCoy's going to go for 256 <laughs> against LSU later in the year. Yeah, okay. No. Uh, but you you got to admit, find you a little bit of it. I think well, it's the number hey, thing. But hey, you think about Carl Pickens, Jawan Jennings, mm -hmm. Kelly Washington. 15's pretty 15's good. 15's become, become the, like almost a signature number yeah. for wide receivers here when you date back to the last 30 years. That's a good point. So, I mean, you know, uh, it almost can become a badge of honor going forward for players to want that number. So, I mean, I understand what you're comparing. So, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm having fun with the 256 against LSU just because the Vols have LSU on the, the, the calendar this year. Pitt gets the win tonight, also playing on a Thursday night. They win the backyard brawl late on a, on a pick six. So Tennessee will face a 1-0 Pitt team next week in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, and I haven't watched that game, I think the biggest thing that jumps out to me is the amount of points that Pitt gave up. A little surprise there. JT Daniels did some good things. They were really fortunate. That was a tie game, and West Virginia's driving for a potential game-winning field goal or a touchdown, and they had a ball go through the receiver's hands. It ends up being a pick six for Pittsburgh. And then West Virginia drove back down the field and had a chance, yeah. but Pitt's defense rose to the occasion. The one thing that you can't make any judgment out of tonight about going into next week is how Tennessee's offensive line, tight ends, and running backs handle pass rush. Because to my surprise, Ball State never brought anybody. I mean, it was literally three-man rush. We're going to drop eight, try to keep the ball in front of us, tight gain. Allowed Hendon Hooker to be very comfortable. Allowed Joe Milton to be very comfortable. They will not have that luxury a week from now. Pittsburgh's going to try to come from different ways. So you don't have a great feed about where your pass protection is uh, with those guys. But, um, again, you play what's in front of you, and Tennessee played it well. Lastly, Tennessee was able to get some disruption in the backfield, but were you surprised they didn't get to the quarterback more? Yeah, I really was. I, and I, I told some, some guys from Ball State, I like the Paddock kid that played quarterback for them tonight. I know he got the bad start early, and he kind of got out of kilter. I think he had three, three or four straight incompletions at one point. I thought he had a little boxy about yeah. him. I thought he had a little poise about him. They did a really good job of getting the ball out of his hands quickly, which made it harder to get there. Uh, Tennessee blitzed some. They weren't really exotic or anything like that. I, I think when I watched the game back as, as I was doing it live, I thought Joshua Joseph flashed multiple times. You could see his speed. I'd be curious to see how it shows up. I thought we would see more out of Byron Young tonight, to be honest with you. I, I, I thought we would see more production there than what we saw. Maybe that was the quick passing game. Maybe they were chipping and doubling and helping. I don't know. I'll have to go back and watch it. But that's the one thing, you know, they didn't get home with a sack tonight. 
uh, which was a surprise to me because I would have lost that bet. Craven Wings, two men to drill. Tennessee wins 59 to 10. That wraps it up here from Neyland Stadium. We've got complete coverage up on the site. All the interviews, Coach Heupel, the players, Rob's four quick takes after the game. We'll have much, much more late tonight, early tomorrow. On three, baby. We're here. When you're craving wings, it's got to be craving wings. Online at cravenwings.com.